Welcome back to McKay's Mind Space. We are filming here today at The Breathing Room in Los Angeles with the amazing Dr. Miranda Bow. You are a licensed educational psychologist, a certified wellness practitioner, and are all the magic behind the amazing wellness space here. So lots of good stuff today, so let's get into it. Sounds good. So before we jump into everything, can you kind of just explain how and why you got into the mental health profession and how that all started for you? Okay. Yeah. Great question. Um, It was quite a journey. So I would say going back to my younger years, probably around high school, I was interested in psychology, but I didn't really know what direction or all the different kind of faucets of psychology. So I knew I had an interest and then through college and grad school, kind of a lot of work experience, different types of research, different populations, doing all that, I um, was able to narrow down and knowing what I wanted to do, which is um, testing. And so it is um, really the, when you look at that, it is identifying strengths, weaknesses, difficulties. And then the big job is to figure out what we're going to do about it. Mm -hmm. So um, I like being on that solution side of things. And that's kind of what um, it's might be hard to see the connection, but it's kind of what brought me into developing the breathing room. Um, Knowing that mental health and people's struggles are something that we all deal with. Everybody experiences it. So really trying to think um, about solutions and Meditation is a big one, which I know we're going to spend a lot of time talking about. (laughs) Yeah, we're going to get into a lot about meditation. When you were in your educational years and in college and everything, were a lot of people in it for mental health related reasons or was it more the sciencey side of it all? Yeah, I think I think for me, when um, I thought I had an interest in psychology, it was because um, of what you learn about as far as like abnormal psych mm-hmm. or um, you know the sort of the um, challenges that it doesn't feel like a lot of people deal with. It felt like very much. Um, the really uh, severe and um, persistent mental illness, which I was sort of fascinated with and trying to understand people's behavior and um, and just being interested in that. And I think today we, or at least I do, I look at mental health as everybody has mental health challenges and difficulties. And um, it's not just the really significant or um, the really impaired mental health that we need to be thinking about. We need to be thinking about everybody's mental health. Something I was thinking about while I was getting ready for this podcast is, um, so my podcast kind of started off as like nutrition based, Mm -hmm. health and wellness based. And these past few months, it has completely kind of turned into mental health Mm -hmm. related. The more guests I bring on, I'm starting to realize how much more it all starts with mental health. Yeah. All these, all this information I'm throwing out about fruits and vegetables yep. doesn't matter unless your mental health is good. Right. And I'm realizing that even if we're talking about health or creativity or art or business, it all stems back yeah. to mental health every single time. Yeah. So I'm really excited to just focus right on that today. I love it. And, yeah. I'm, and I love that that's coming up more and more in conversation and people are looking at mental health through that lens that mm-hmm. it, it be, all begins in the mind. Yeah. And that goes with my next question is, is in your practice, do you think recently there's been an increase in interest with mental health? I think so. I, I think um, for starters, I think the younger generation or younger population are much more comfortable in talking about mental health and even recognizing and identifying things like stress and anxiety. And it becomes part of the conversation, which I think historically those things were shunned to talk about or um, were things that you didn't want to identify with. It felt too vulnerable. It felt weak. And so I think um, that is shifting and that's so important that that is shifting. And I think, um, yeah, the younger the younger people are, are recognizing it and doing their best to prioritize it. Yeah. I think younger people are feeling like I just want to feel better in some way. And that's something that um, if they're meeting us with that of saying, I want to feel better, then 
how do we provide the resources and how do we provide the recommendations and the support around that? Mm -hmm. So, and I also think COVID probably had an impact for a lot of people where um, it was difficult for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I think um, a lot of people started to reflect on life and yeah. reflect on their well being in different ways um, where you were kind of stepped, you had to step out of the routine and just sort of that narrow lens of wake up, work, go to sleep, wake up, work, go to sleep, yeah. and that productivity. And when that shifted, I think it, for some people, it made them pivot in their lives in a way of prioritizing mental health. So the result of that is people are talking about it more. And for other people, they realize that they really do deal with mental health challenges that maybe they were avoiding or distracted by or unaware. Yeah and kind of knowing that there was maybe an emptiness or knowing that they're wanting more, needing more, something wasn't right, yeah. but never had an opportunity to really look at it or um, sit with it. And so I think for all of those reasons now, mental health is on the um, forefront of a lot of people's minds and um, priorities, which is good to see. Yes, so many things you said that stuck out to me. For one, being comfortable to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree more. I think so many people, so many people that are in their 20s or 30s, they talk about it more. Even even my younger brother who's in just got out of high school, you know, he's even expressed that like it's much more common to talk yeah. about. It's more common to go to therapy. Yep. It's more common to not want to go out and party anymore because they have anxiety or they're dealing yes. with something. And how amazing that like we're all able to talk about that yes. so much more. Second, the COVID. I was thinking that before yeah. you even said it. I just remember at that time in my life, I was in college and I thought it was the end of the world, mm -hmm. but it was because we all had this shift because we had no control over anything. There was no choice. Yeah. So we all were kind of forced to deal with all these feelings that we were distracting, that we didn't realize that we were distracting. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. opened up this whole other world of mental health that we all were like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I agree. Yeah. And I, I think it started off so scary maybe, and now it's really a beautiful thing that yeah. we're all able to kind of connect and realize that we're all actually a lot more similar than we think. Yeah. Yeah. So recently you just opened the breathing room, yes. which is where we are now. Yes. And which is essentially a meditation center mm -hmm. and you call it a space for stillness. So when did this idea or concept come about? Yeah. So it's a, it's a big question. So yeah. I'll try to be as um, efficient as um, go, go possible. Okay. Yeah. So um, a, a part of it came from my own meditation practice mm -hmm. um, where I really wanted to think about designing my life and creating my life in the way that um, kind of no fear and just really spending time thinking about that and really thinking about what does it look like? What does it feel like? What are the habits or the routines that the rituals that I have in my everyday life? What is it that I need to be at my optimal well-being, my optimal functioning, all of that? And um, I know for certain that meditation has had a profound effect on my life. Um, and it is something that I know I'm, I'm much better when I'm consistent with my practice. Mm -hmm. Like so many people, it can be really hard to stick to the practice and yeah. find ways to be committed to it and, um, and have more of it in your life too. And mm -hmm. so I wanted to create a space where that exists, where I can be in a space where this is my lifestyle and these are the things that I need and um, that I want to have. And I also want to share it with a lot of people because I right. think it can benefit a lot of people. Um, so that's kind of one part from where it comes for me personally. And yeah. then also from the psychology part of things, um, which I was talking about earlier with um, what I do is testing and it's really identifying what can be struggles or vulnerabilities and then what do we do about it? And so over the years, um, I what I do is I test somebody and then I write up a long report and the report needs to have evidence based recommendations or strategies of how we're targeting the different things that we might identify. And so what I have found with no matter what I would identify, um, whether it be anxiety, ADHD, depression, you name it, mm -hmm. um, 
mindfulness and meditation is an evidence-based yeah. practice and recommendation that I always give and it's for almost anything I find. And what I would find is kind of over the years when I would follow up with clients and see like, how are you doing? And what are these recommendations or strategies or what have you done? And how are you responding to mm -hmm. this intervention or this, you know, these recommendations? And what I would find is when I follow up with uh, meditation, so many people would be like, well, I tried it. Or I did it for like a week and I just can't do it. Or I get distracted. I, I, I want to do it, but I can't. And there was all these barriers. And so that was part of it too, of looking at, we know what the science says behind it. We know what the um, effects of a meditation practice and how, how profound and beneficial it can be for any sort of mental health, um, attention, you name it. And, um, but there's things that for people feel like it feels daunting. It feels like they don't recognize maybe the instant gratification or the immediate feedback. And so what happens is a lot of people tap out or give up before they experience the benefits. And so, and that's understandable. I mean, it's, I, I don't know how many years I tried to do it and thought, okay, I, I read about it. Let me start it. Let me do this. I need to do it. I know how important this is. And I would try and try and try and I'd, you know, try a different app or I'd go to some classes or, you know, I would, look for anything could to try to do it. And it took me a long time to get to the point that I recognize the benefits or that I experience the benefits. And so when I kind of name it a space for stillness, it really, that stillness is the benefits that yeah. we all kind of get from meditation. And so sometimes meditation can be looked at as uh, the methodology or the method to arrive at what those benefits are, which a way to kind of capture that is is this idea of stillness. So would you say when we're meditating, that's kind of our time to not focus on the distractions? So when you were saying like my clients get so distracted, that's something I try to think about when I'm meditating. Like, okay, I'll, I'll think of something. I'm like, I like actually think about taking it and throwing it out. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, that's distracting me right mm -hmm. now. The whole point of this is to not be distracted. distracted. Yeah. Part of it is to be, <laughs> yeah. part of it is because we're, we're human and that's just our nature that we're, we're going to be distracted. And it's kind of how our mind, our brains have come to be. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times meditation is just redirecting. And so when you think about meditation or you read about meditation um, or any sort of the, the experts and the um, people that really um, uh, live a life of yeah. a kind of an ongoing meditation. Um, it's what they'll say is it's just about redirecting your focus, redirecting your focus. So I think there's sort of this myth that our minds need to be empty and that we need to be three, free of thought or free of distractions. Right. And the distractions are going to come. It's sort of our how we respond to it and how we react to it. And if we can just kind of easily um, shift and notice like, okay, the traffic is bothering me or I'm recognizing the traffic and let it go um, and just kind of redirect back into yourself. And that's sometimes why we talk about the breath. It's something that we can always latch on to um, or body scanning where you can recognize being in your body. And so the more we can kind of get into that feeling state that is more presence when we're in our minds, that is when we're not so present. And mm -hmm. so um, that's part of the practice is how we just get to be in the present yeah. and know that our thoughts are gonna come and you just think of them like clouds, um, just yeah, let them go that. or yeah. waves and they're just gonna kind of pass. We just don't wanna latch on to them. Mm -hmm. Do you think that this is something that you kind of have to learn over time? I think it's something that is a practice, um, but the beautiful thing is the more we've learned about the brain in the recent years is neuroplasticity. We can train our brains. Yeah. We can make this happen where um, having a practice, and that's I think that's the struggle sometimes is that people will say, oh, I meditated for 20 minutes and okay, I don't, I, I'm still the way that I am. And yeah, so it's, it's like recognizing, really, 
yeah rest that 20 minutes yeah and it's also like recognizing that we're we're wanting to kind of transform we're wanting to um get control of our minds which so many of us don't have control yes. and so in the same way that you think about going to the gym and going okay i went and did some bicep curls you're not going to look like he man you know it just mm -hmm. is like not realistic to think that sure if you really look at it you can look and go okay there's been some cell transformation or some muscle tears and something is happening yeah. but it's not enough to maybe what you have in mind and so the same way with meditation it's not just because you do it one time that you're going to be this really relaxed calm um stress-free person it, it is a practice and every day is different so i've yeah. been meditating for years and there's days where i just drop right in and i just get what i need and it's just so effortless and it feels so good and other days i'm like I, my mind is talking to me and i mm -hmm. and it's harder um and so but that's recognizing that as part of the practice too yeah. is that it just is kind of there's not every day is the same but over time you look and you go wow i really recognize what this has done for me yeah and with consistency yes. you would see so yes. much more results and consistency is everything and yeah. yeah and so it is and that's one of the things that i would love to help people see about the breathing room is that i want this to be a space where you come often mm -hmm. um and so coming once to test it out or to experience with it and see what it is is great because it can introduce you to a life yeah. style or a way a practice that you never thought was for you or that is something you can do i definitely challenge that it's for everybody mm -hmm. um and so it, it it really is about coming and um or wherever you are doing a practice consistently people coming in here more and seeing the benefits over time is super important rather than like you said kind of just introducing them to this lifestyle which i love that you call it a lifestyle because mm -hmm. it really is and it's not just something you you do every every once in a blue moon you're not going to see the same effects right. like you're saying and i just think that if more people you know prioritize that time which hopefully like we're talking about is yep. going to become more of the trend yeah but i think there's a little bit of like like you're saying like that little educational piece i think the word like um practice mm -hmm. has kind of got a little like overused mm -hmm. that people don't understand that it's a practice yeah. even hearing you talk about it right now i'm thinking about it completely differently i'm like you know it's something i really do have to practice yeah it's not just this yes. like little activity i could go and do, do yeah you know so i think that that's really important and i think when to your point the educational piece on that is that when people understand that they don't feel as defeated right because mm -hmm. they think like okay this is a practice and it does take some time or it can take some time and um if i stick with it then then i can start to see the benefits versus oh i did it for a week and i didn't really see the benefits so i've um, you know, kind of shut it off as something that doesn't, yeah. doesn't work for me. With that being said, there could be something going on during that time of your life, the yeah. week that you tried it out, just like yes. you're saying how there's going to be shifts. I completely agree with that. Yeah. Based on what's going on in my personal life, um, the way my body's physically feeling mm -hmm. and being a woman, if I'm in my yeah. phase or not, I mean, right. I'm going to be so mentally different during different times. And even with men, you know, with work or whatever is going on, yeah. your stress levels are completely different every single day. Right. You know? Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So why peace and luxury? What's the correlation there? I'm definitely getting that vibe in here, <laughs> but what's the correlation? So that's kind of layered as well. Um, first of all, I think um, in just kind of when I was uh imagining when i go back to thinking about the way i wanted my life to look and the things i wanted um in it and how it to how i wanted it to feel um luxury was a was a part of it why yeah. can't we have that and so that's where i want people to think about too that just your worth and kind of your self worthiness is such an important thing and if we can all kind of shift with that and recognize our worth and that you're worthy of whatever it is that you want to have, whatever you want to achieve, whatever you want your life to look like. And so I think um, along with the sort of shifting in mental health and meditation and all these beautiful things that are happening, a big part of that is to prioritize yourself and prioritize your mental health above all, your peace above all. So what that looks like is I want to say, everybody deserves this. This is a space that um, you deserve it. And it doesn't require a big fancy vacation that you have to yeah. save up for to have that feeling of, 
I'm doing self-care and I'm doing something that makes me feel good. Um, when I was kind of looking at the barriers of meditation and thinking, okay, what are the barriers that stop people and how do we kind of think about overcoming them, which is where the breathing room again in concept came about, um, is that having meditation be something that feels like another to do or another task is not what I wanted it to feel like. So there is that importance of it is a practice. It requires discipline. It is something that you have to prioritize and you have to do. Um, but how can we make that feel like a beautiful self care thing and that you're worthy of this time with yourself? And so that's kind of where luxury came into it. Mm -hmm. Another part of it is um, in just looking at what people feel like they need mm -hmm. to have peace. Um, and this was just sort of just through sort of informal conversation or <laughs> informal research of talking with my colleagues and friends yeah. and other psychologists of what do you do for self-care and what is it that feels good when you need a break or when you need that, when you're really stressed, what do you do for yourself? Mm -hmm. And a lot of the response that I got is that um, people would want to do something nice, you know, so it would yeah. be like, I want to go to a nice hotel and, or I want to go to a spa or I want to go on a retreat. I want to go on a vacation. And when you kind of break it down and think about what is that? That really mean what is it that they're really looking for it's yeah. that escape a little bit and it's an escape for something that feels like you're rewarding yourself or you're treating yourself or you're giving yourself something that isn't part of your everyday and so that's where this idea kind of came up too is that it's got to feel like something that we all deserve and that we all kind of wait for or we think yeah. that it's a one-off thing that like okay i have to plan for this or i have to save for this and so i really wanted to think about how do we have make a moment like that that we're all kind of chasing after part of our everyday life mm -hmm. and that's what i wanted this to feel like i wanted it to feel like a little mini retreat a little yeah. daily vacation and something that you can um, come to and you can do your work but you're doing it in the space and um, hopefully around the people that are here that yeah. feels really good and welcoming safe supported you feel understood and it feels nice to be here yeah, I strongly agree with what you're saying about having luxury as a priority. Yeah, that is something that I prioritize so much. I, 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 you know, some of my friends or people in my life might think it's a little dramatic sometimes to maybe focus on those things, but I know me and I yeah. know what makes me feel good. And what you're saying is very true. I, I, I second it a hundred percent because. <laughs> those those very little luxurious mm -hmm. pieces and parts in your life really do impact you because i don't feel like i need to go on a vacation every six months because of my shitty every other day life then you know right if i right. just kind of incorporate yeah. these really important pieces and then get rid of all the things that aren't serving me yeah you can kind of equal it out yeah. so i think that that's so important to have here especially if when you're engaging in something like meditation or breath work or whatever it is for yeah. your self care and what you're saying about being so deserving of it. I yeah. think that a lot of people struggle with that imposter syndrome. Of, right. I can't afford to have this life. I can't, you know, I don't have time for this life, but really, you know, if you take a step back and look at all the things you are paying for yeah. or that yeah. <laughs> you are um, spending time in, you know, I I've had to do that even, you know, this past week and there was some things I wanted to do and there are some things I didn't and I you know I, I thought about it and I was like okay like do I want to wake up tomorrow morning and not be hung over mm -hmm. and do I want to go to this yoga class do I want to so I'm going to cut out that stupid going out session mm. and drinking you know yeah just yeah. when you take a step back and actually look at what you're spending your money and time right. on um everyone like you're saying everyone is so deserving of that yeah. luxurious little piece no matter where you're at in life you right. can find it right and i think it's so important um where just in kind of the bigger picture of well-being that where we identify what our values are and what really matters mm -hmm. um and then that helps us prioritize the way we live our life yep. and so um you know recognizing and that there shouldn't be any shame and going like i like luxurious things yes. and i that aligns 
aligns with me and those are my values and the more I kind of operate my life within my value system, the more in harmony you are. Mm -hmm. And often you're, you're doing things and living your life in a more authentic way. And yeah. I'd like to think too that I'm attracting it more into my yeah. life the more I focus on it. I mean, if you surround yourself in a space like this around people that are also engaging like yeah. things like this, you're going to do that more and you're going to attract more people in your life that are wanting to do wanting to do that and it's going to become more normalized yeah. for you in your life. So I completely stand by everything I love you're it. saying. <laughs> yeah. That's something I feel like I'm trying to really teach, you know, people that are in their 20s and stuff, you know, we're all in this weird place of trying to figure out what we want to do in life mm -hmm. and in college and money is always the big issue and I'm trying to like shift the culture of the going out and everything, you know, we can still all do that and balance. But yeah. Um, for me, I've realized in the past few years, pri prioritizing services like this yeah. and um, whether, and you know, if that's called luxurious and everything like that's more important to me. Yeah. Yeah. So love that. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. 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 Um, so what specifically can your machines and services here do to benefit someone who might deal with anxiety, OCD, ADHD, and any kind of like mood disorders. Yeah, well, so kind of going back into where we're talking about neuroplasticity again, where mm -hmm. we can really change the way our brain operates to some degree. And so when we're thinking about a lot of the mood disorders or just mental health challenges, um, we know that meditation and can really impact and address a lot of those things. And so getting into that practice and kind of what we talked about and getting what feels like more control over your mind um, is something that you start to feel better and um, and live better in a lot yeah. of ways. And so when you think, for instance, when you're thinking about um, you know, attention or ADHD, for example, and, um, you know, where the, the mind is just moving, moving, moving or jumping around or having difficulty focusing on things. You can just imagine the practice of meditation and the impact that that can have where, in a sense, you're training your brain to refocus and refocus. And um, and also when you're present and you're in your body, which meditation really works on helping you recognize that um, and what that feels like to be anchored to your breath or um, to feel like you have control over your breath. And we know the way that we breathe and our breath impacts our brain completely. So um, all of that is um, when we're kind of more present, when we know what it feels like to really be relaxed or we know what it feels like to kind of have some stillness um, mm -hmm. or some peace or whatever you might want to call that, it's something that we can then get familiar with and we can understand what helps us to get there. So when um, you're taking the time and you're focusing on your breath and you then you're reflecting and thinking, how do I feel now? How do I feel after this meditation session? Yeah. And recognizing that and going, oh, I'm feeling less anxious or I'm feeling less worried about things. You start to make those connections of going, okay, maybe this does actually work for me and this helps me and then you get control and you take it with you, right? So mm -hmm. then you're going into a presentation or a, a final or whatever it might be. Um, and you realize the power that you have within mm -hmm. to get into either the mindset or the state of being that you want to be by using your breath, by recognizing what it feels to be grounded or present in your body. And when you're that, some of the worries about the future are, um, yeah. you know, kind of uh, you're, you're not there with it. You're in the now. The um, things that are, you know, are painful or that you need to heal from, from the past are mm -hmm. not with you in that moment. And so the state that we can be in when we're present is a pretty peaceful place to be. Yeah. I was thinking too, what a confidence booster. Yes, like, yeah, wow. exactly. I think, I think everyone could benefit from that. Like, you know, hearing you say all that, I'm like, that would be so great if I was going um, even to like before like a social event I yeah feel like before i go to a social event i'm so in my head yes you're yeah. thinking about so many things so just to like meditate for a little bit yeah. and get a little like back to reality yeah it kind of seems like i would feel more confident with myself right right absolutely <laughs> and who i am and in, in my thoughts rather than like all over the place yep. yeah 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 because your thoughts 
can be so torturous. <laughs> the thoughts about yeah. like things that we're worried about and things that anxious about it can just be so so torturous and what happens is we we stick to those thoughts we attach to those thoughts mm -hmm. and so that's the state that in that you take on you take on that anxious that you know state of nervousness or worry or fear or whatever it can be and so when we can start to disconnect from our thoughts a little bit or recognize that we're not our thoughts that our thoughts are just going to move they're going to move they're going to move they're going to move and mm -hmm. if we don't if we can learn to not attach to them then we're it's just it's a very liberating um, yeah. place to be and confidence boosting yeah. and all of that for sure. Yeah. And what do you think about maybe after like a big event or something kind of like decompressing all of your thoughts and emotions yeah. after maybe after a final yes. or a so social event that gave you like a lot of anxiety or something? Right. So when we think about kind of stressful events, um, we think about like the nervous system and what happens. And so um, we're often in just modern day life, we're living in this like fight, flight, freeze state just because yeah. of anything from parking, from um, yeah. the interactions with people at work or whatever it can be, we're just elevated and we're just kind of in this um, state of a stressful state. And mm -hmm. so following something like a final or a presentation or just a really, you know, stressful experience to um, know or kind of learn how to reset your nervous system so that you can truly kind of get into that rest state yeah. um, is really powerful. And otherwise, we kind of live there. We kind of live in that, you know, um, really high stress state and our sleeping is impacted. We're not getting good sleep. We're yeah. running around a million miles an hour. We're just thinking productivity, productivity, productivity. Um, and we don't, we're disconnected. We're disconnected in ourselves. There's not any harmony that's going on in the way that we're operating. And so, um, yeah, to, to meditation can be so powerful after mm -hmm. something before and after, um, where you kind of get yourself back to, um, you know, a, a healthy, uh, space. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I agree because I love to do it in the morning. I feel like I can't start my day. I don't even look at my phone That's, yes, for the first good. hour of my day. I yeah. cannot until I've done my little routine that involves meditation, involves my breath work. But then again, at night, it's such a, it's a whole other different routine. Yeah. Yes. Um, and they're not these super long, right. elaborate yeah. routines. They're very simple. Like really last night, mine was probably like five, seven minutes, yeah. but it was very simple. I actually don't even remember how fast I fell asleep afterwards because yeah. I think I like immediately <laughs> fell asleep. But I've just come across so many people and had so many conversations with people that are going along with what you're saying, like dealing with all these things throughout their everyday life. And they're doing all the tasks. They're check marking off all the mm -hmm. things on their list, but they're not really present. They're not yeah. really there because they're thinking about 10 other things while they're doing something like they're not in that present moment right and like how beneficial could something like this be for all like you know everybody that's kind of dealing with stuff like that because life's not going to turn off we're right. always going to have a checklist right. every single day yes no matter if you are a full-time worker part-time worker or you're just a stay-at-home mom like you know your thoughts are just there yeah like yeah and without and so first of all, I love that. I love the little just simple tips like that that you just when you wake up, you just don't look at your phone right away. Yeah. And so that small change, that. yes, <laughs> is that. can be just like the beginning of building a new morning ritual. Mm -hmm. You know, where you're like, okay, I don't look at the phone and I take those first five to seven minutes and I just focus on my breath or I do a meditate, whatever it is that your ritual is, it can be the smallest little uh, shift like that of just saying, I'm not going to pick up my phone for the first hour. It's huge. And it can yes. start to form a completely different way of starting your day and operating. And same thing Absolutely. at night. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And I think like, um, we, we do, we live in a society where it is about an agenda and it is about production, productivity, all of those things. And so where do we kind of nurture ourselves and our soul and our what we need to we're just kind of in this you know different way of being and so if you don't take those five to seven minutes or 20 minutes or some people come here for two or three hours whatever yeah. that looks like for them that it is connecting with yourself and you know if without that practice it's it's a 
a big reason why so many of us feel um, just, you know, unhappy. Um, yeah, and I agree. just like they're just going through the motions. So like going back to the no phone in the morning. I stress it so much on my podcast. Somehow I bring it up in every podcast. It's kind of funny, yeah. (laughs) But it started off like just like 10, 15 minutes, like not immediately scrolling over, like rolling over and getting on my phone right away. Um, And then it kind of turned into a half hour. And now I enjoy it so much. I look forward to it so much that I literally set my alarm a whole hour earlier just for that like time. And, And I tell everyone like, there's no like list I follow. I just naturally like, wake up and I meditate and then I like I just do all these things that I did never planned to do like you're just listening to your body yeah that's all it is yeah it's literally all it is it's yeah. the best part of my day yeah I love it <laughs> and I tell I everyone it. I'm like just kind of start there like yeah and you'll just figure out what your body likes and doesn't like yep. if you want to do five 10 minute yoga stretches yeah while you're listening to some peaceful sounds or something you know what I mean like right. whatever it is just follow your body yeah and it's so impactful. And I think that's so important that you um, state it that way of recognizing like um, not to think like, let me just follow off a to-do list, but yeah. just that is so much more the, um, you know, in essence of being present where you're just like, I'm, I'm checking in with my body. What does my body feel like? What does my body need? I'm checking in with myself, my mood. What do I feel like? What do I need? And yeah. yeah. And then I'm 10 times better for everything else I have to do yes. once I check my phone. See yes. All the yes. Yep. <laughs> um, so we've kind of already touched on this, but do you think that everyone should be engaging in some type of meditation, even if someone doesn't think that they have any type of issues? So I think, you know, when I think about um, meditation, I think that everybody can benefit from it. Um, And I do think meditation looks very different for people. So I do want to kind of expand what that can be um, for somebody because they may think it's sitting on top of a mountain, you know, and and, um, being out in the middle of the forest and doing their breath or doing their practice. And sure, that's one way. And it can be the technology and the machines that we have. It can be the apps. For some people, I believe it is their art that they do or their craft that is just where you can get into a zone so i think athletes can get into a space where they're doing something um that is just tapping into their innate talent and it's a flow and i think and i say think the same thing for you know different types of art it can it can really look different for a lot of people i also want to emphasize that meditation is an ancient principle it is universal meaning that it is anywhere in the world with any kind of population or community of people they've had some form whether it's been called prayer whether it's been called a true meditation you name it um it is something that when you look at it like that it for me i think it's it's essential then um and so i also think that um for people that think like oh i don't need it i um because i feel great and and how wonderful but i also think um (laughs) we yeah yeah (laughs) we all have to learn how to manage our own mental wellness um and so for some of us that think like oh i don't have any problems i think it's a little bit of like that what we were talking about in the beginning of where we don't talk about mental health or it's you know you just um sweep everything under the rug i'm fine i'm fine i'm great um and i don't have any mental um mental health issues because i'm not diagnosed with schizophrenia or i'm not major depression or whatever and i really want to kind of relook at like we all struggle with symptoms of anxiety, depression, difficulties concentrating, whatever it is, we yeah. all struggle with it. And so um, we all have to learn how to manage our, our mental health and meditation mm-hmm. is such a powerful tool. Yeah. So I love immediately that you don't categorize meditation as one thing. It yeah. can be in so many different cultures, um, in prayer, um, religion, whatever it is spiritually, yeah. it could be, it could be whatever is unique to you and your needs and your mental health needs. Yeah. And I, I tried, you explained it better than I probably ever could because <laughs> that's kind of <laughs> what I always try to get across to, whether it's in your routine or prayer, or strictly meditation. What it's about is 
how is it benefiting you and your mental mm-hmm. health? And even if you, again, don't have diagnosed anxiety, you you deal with stress. Yeah. We all yeah, deal with stress. It's, it's, yep. it's life. It's in our body. We have stress in our body. It's yes. how do we manage it from a healthy approach or an unhealthy approach? Right, right. Are we distracting it or ignoring it or are we dealing with it in, in a healthy, normal way? Yeah, yeah, so exactly. I, I completely agree with that. So with that being said, how true do you think it is that breathwork and meditation can help cure certain health-related issues? I think um, cure can be maybe a big or pretty loaded, but I do think when we look at um, a lot of like disease or illnesses, 90% of chronic illnesses are have some sort of relationship to stress um, or stress being sometimes very causal of it. So I think um, there's recognizing that if we can manage our stress, how much healthier we can be. Um, I also think that Um, the mind body connection is something that, uh, from all angles we need to look at. So like how you were saying in the beginning, like I, you started your wellness, um, of really thinking about nutrition and fitness. And I think so important. Um, and then, but there's the part two of the, the mental health and how connected that is the mind body connection, um, is something that if we're struggling in our mind, what may show up in our physical being in our in our bodies that can be disease or illnesses and so um for me i i say and i believe that health starts in the mind uh and so i think it's something that um you know we're and and again more and more research and science is coming out and saying that um and so um our mind and our bodies are so often not in harmony Mm -hmm. um where we're just uh, mind is doing its thing body is doing its thing and there's just no coherence or harmony and so that's often where when you think about breath work and you think about meditation why so often um a lot of times meditation will start with the breath and it will have you if you're listening to a meditation or you're participating in a guided meditation or you're doing your own thing at some point the breath is a part of it and so um when we can kind of tap into our breath or connect with our breath we can get in tune with our body a little bit more you often um in different types of meditation too there's a body scan so Mm -hmm. a lot of times at night that's a good one before sleeping where you just kind of do a body scan and you um recognize the different places in your body and and intentionally try to relax them Um, and so when we can relax the body and we can kind of open up the body often we can have an effect in the mind too where we can relax the mind a little bit more and we can kind of go into some deeper states of of meditation too so and we're very intentional with that here where we in all of the services we cover you up with a weighted blanket Mm -hmm. and so if we can help to kind of relax that body or make the body feel safe um and and that then we hope that the mind can kind of follow too and so you can have a um thinking about some of those things in your practice Mm -hmm. um that can make a difference and again sometimes it's just the smallest little things but (laughs) can make a huge difference yeah yeah Yeah. so i know you said cure is definitely like kind of a a bold word and i almost was even hesitant to ask it because i know how it could be taken but do you think you know like with your clients and your patients taking that first holistic approach is more beneficial than you know something else yeah i mean i think it's i think when we look at um efficacy on something like meditation and medication and therapies whatever it can be Mm -hmm. it's it's all kind of up there and so there's all these different factors that individuals you know we think about everyone as an individual um and so but i i know just in the short time we've been open for 90 days the feedback that we've gotten on how you know, clients coming here consistently, what it's done for them and how they've never felt better or lived better or have been more fulfilled with themselves um, because they have found a practice and something that works for them. And um, so I think we're in a space that mental health resources are uh, are just lacking. Um, And so, yeah, and I think for some people too, um, 
it can it can feel like a big step to go and get the professional help that they need or to go and speak to a doctor about medication and you're being referred and it can be months before you you know and and that is certainly um a path to go for many many people mm -hmm. um but i also think something like meditation we can start now yeah. um and we uh why not why not um and if you can have the effect that we know that this can have, um, it, it just is gonna benefit. It really is gonna benefit. So I do think that, um, you know, it's it, part of this for me too, was really kind of campaigning behind meditation and getting um, the recognition that it deserves as yeah. being a, a tool, a practice and evidence-based mm -hmm. that can really address a lot of mental health yeah. um, issues. And so I, I think it's what, you know, everybody has to figure out what works for them, yeah. but this is accessible and everyone, um, you know, like as we were talking has, has to learn how to manage their own mental health. And mm -hmm. so this is something that, um, a practice that I hope everybody can, you know, recognize that they can have access to and mm -hmm. um, that they can try to do for themselves. Yeah, you saying like, this is what we have right now, I think is so powerful. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people don't think like that. Yeah, I think a lot of people think, and there's nothing wrong again with the route of medication, but if we take the medication, that's the quicker, let's just kind of, right. you know, right. um, with, which still engaging in that meditation right now that's right there that's yeah you know very accessible um can be nothing but beneficial right for you as well too you know that's if anything it's going to maybe help the stress of taking the medication or anything right um you know i've just heard so many crazy stories of people i've had someone on my podcast who she said that she had this like mass does, didn't know what it was fall um when she went and got an mri went to this like wellness breath work retreat mm -hmm. came back and it was gone. Mm -hmm. and it was and she's like i know that i cured it myself. yeah i know so many people that are in that have similar stories like that which is just so inspiring yeah so cool um and then you know i even think you know, i used to have really bad acne when i was in college it's awful and all my dermatologist told me is it was stress 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 stress, stress. Mm -hmm. um and i now you know, at the time I was 22 and I was like, shut up, like, you know, I'm in college, yeah. <laughs> whatever. I didn't want to, but now I do know that when I engage in my self-care routines, my mm -hmm. skin is better, my skin mm -hmm. is calmer mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. my body and my mind are calmer. Yeah. And it really is a correlation there. I just Absolutely. think people kind of have to experience that themselves yeah. to really understand that. Yeah. Yeah. It's very true. Yeah. And part of it really is um, we're just society too. We want that instant, instant cure, instant solve and um, really kind of, you know, trusting the process and yes. um, being patient with it if, if you have to be. Um, but it is kind of trusting that process and believing and knowing some of the disbelief or the resistance is part of the process too, where, um, you know, you just because we we want that instant gratification or that instant um sort of uh feedback or effect and so i think you know trusting and being patient um mm -hmm. is something that uh it, it it can really pay off in a bigger way than you may have um found through kind of the shortcuts yeah. And I was, you know, as you're saying that, I'm thinking it's the same thing as what's a little bit more normalized is, you know, trying to lose weight and going yeah. to the gym. Jim, you know, you're not going to lose probably your 20 pounds that you wanted to lose in the first week. You have right. to trust the process yeah. that yep. it's going to be better for you. Um, same thing with medication. If you, whatever medication it is, you have to trust the process yeah. that it's hopefully going to work out as well too. So, you know, why not engage into this meditation? Right. It's just not as normalized yet. Yeah. We're getting there. Yeah. It's there. the same exact approach. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I would think that people that come here on a regular basis love it so much. <laughs> it's very peaceful. So how can we take something like this home with us and kind of had that same peaceful environment, um, you know, and something I always say like at home is like a clear space is a clear mind. Yes. So how can we kind of yes. that at home? Yeah. 
that. I think so too. I think, mm -hmm. um, you know, the kind of the more that we're attached to sometimes doesn't necessarily serve us. And so um, having a space that is your space, that's, you know, kind of free from clutter yeah. and, um, and a, what feels like a peaceful place. And that can look different for a lot of people. Um, for some people, they may want to be in a dark space where it feels like safe and, and kind of cozy and other people might want to be in the sunlight and yeah. in front of windows. And so it can look very different. Um, but I think some of the things that to think about is to make it feel like your own little retreat. Yeah. So when we kind of go back into that conversation around luxury, that yeah. whatever those things are, if it's a nice smelling candle, if it is a cozy blanket, if it is a nice meditation pillow um, that you sit on or mat, whatever that kind of looks like, that it's an inviting space that you want to go to and feels good, that it doesn't have some of the things around that cause you stress. So don't keep your mail by it. Don't keep your, yeah. you know, kind of your to-do list. Um, kind of make your space that um, it's, it, it's very intentional yes. and serves the purpose. And so, um, I, and I've said this a lot about the breathing room too, when we think about an intentional practice or an intentional space. Um, for instance, I have all the exercise equipment that I need at home <laughs> and I know what to do. Um, but when I try to exercise at home, it's very different than if I go to a gym. Yep. Um, I'm distracted by little things, the dog barking Amazon, or I'm thinking like, oh, let me just swap out the laundry real quick or whatever it might be. Yes. It, it enters, it bleeds into my workout routine. Um, and so I think about uh, like when I go to a gym, I'm going there with intention. I know exactly what I'm there to do um, and I go in and you can I, I have a much more productive workout session than if I'm trying to work out at home so think about meditation yeah. in the same way if you're in a, the middle of your living room where the family is around or and there's distractions you you might carve out you know 20 minutes but you're not actually getting a good 20 minutes or you're not yeah. really intentional about it because all this other stuff kind of seeps in. So, um, you know, to kind of think about your space where it serves its purpose and it's very intentional for your peace, your stillness, your meditation, it just kind of um, is recognized as, as that so that then when you do enter that space, you're already a few steps yeah. into your brain as knowing what's going to happen and what to expect. Um, and I also really want to emphasize relaxing the body. So um, again, if that is getting like your own weighted blanket that you take home, or if it's a relaxing aromatherapy or candle mm -hmm. or something that just kind of helps you feel relaxed, um, then that's a good thing too, that, um, you know, you just kind of have around candles are good. Yeah. There's something about that, the, the light of candles or, even watching a flame can be a form of meditation for some people that they just try to focus on something so simple as the flame or focus on something so simple as your breath um, yeah. is, is, is how you can make the practice. Yeah, and when you're saying that, I'm thinking that that could be so important for people that maybe have like roommates or live with their partners or whatever like that could be something really important to focus on just like having those little tiny pieces yeah. because i think that's a big issue that's something i struggle with like i really don't think i could ever have a roommate because my space is just i mean my apartment is like a giant peace room yeah. um, before i moved to california i lived with someone and i had actually a whole separate room in the house that was called my peace room. The oh, whole I house love was, it. Yeah, my whole the whole <laughs> house was black, and then my peace room was like this, like orange, yellow, green, like completely different room. Yeah. Um, but it was just this room I sat in and mm -hmm. did just that. And now that um, I'm somewhere different, I, I do that same thing. I'm like, there is just a candle. I'm thinking as you're saying that all those little things and of friends that I have that want that same space, but maybe kind of struggle That's because. Right. They live across the street from a fire station mm -hmm. <laughs> or yep. they have the dogs or whatever yeah. but that doesn't mean ditch it completely though. right right you know so like what you're saying is you know have a have a little corner maybe that's yeah. your crystals and candles or your favorite scent or whatever and that could just bring you that little like moments of peace yeah happiness yeah mm -hmm. or even if you if it's um you know where you're in a, in a house with a lot of roommates or a lot of activity it may 
um, you might want to think about like your time. It may be that you want to get up an hour before everybody else right. does. Mm -hmm. And then you create your space. And if you have to pick it up when you're done, um, <laughs> you know, where it's then becomes a, yeah. the kid's play corner or whatever it, it can be. Um, but, you know, to think about how you can create that and, and have that. Um, yeah. Super, super important. I also think too, you know, just the clutter. It just like really mm -hmm. simply just like keeping your house yeah. kind of tidy. Yeah. I'm a little bit of a neat freak, but I do every morning like I have to straighten up something. Yeah. I'm you know, just like when I walked in here, you know, you're tightening up everything. I'm like, <laughs> I get it. I get it. It's just like this little tiny checklist that I have to do really yeah. quick. I think it's super important because I think if you like have clutter and mess, you might have clutter and mess in your mind. Absolutely, mind. absolutely. Um, and there's there's some um, research behind that too. Yeah. Like if there's a lot of visual distractions, it can sometimes make it very hard for us to focus on what we need to focus on. Yeah, I'm um, very guilty of that. Yeah, I, I yeah. know that's true for Yeah, me. absolutely, absolutely. And, um, you know, there is something about sort of um, purging and being able to purge the things that don't serve us or don't, you know, uh, help us feel good and so I even think about like Marie Kondo and her idea of like uh, that you only have things that you really love around you yeah. or that feel good because excess of things can start to be a burden yeah. um, where you have a, a different sort of attachment to it like oh I feel guilty if I were to get rid of this or I um, you know need to have all these things around because it, you know I, I don't just want to get rid of them and it's holding on to something that you don't necessarily need or doesn't bring you joy so I think sometimes that's a good Kind of it's good to look at that what you have what are your belongings what are your surroundings and does it make you feel good and when mm -hmm. you have things around you that make you feel good um then you know you think about what the the result or the impact of that is mm -hmm. Just going into a mess feels very chaotic for me and yeah. very uncomfortable. <laughs> I, I yes, <laughs> yep. So there's definitely yeah. something to that. The one other thing I would say um, in your kind of meditation space or um, meditation ritual, mm -hmm. adding a journal um, can be so important. Yes. And so, um, you know, when we following meditation, and if you kind of just break it down and think about it too, it's a time where we're actually kind of connecting with our deeper selves and we're um, listening to ourselves. So kind of things that might come up or things that we think about or, you know, just images that might pass by or things that we feel inspired by, whatever it can be. Um, pay attention to those things that and write them down it may feel like oh i don't really know what this means or this feels like it means nothing and it might it could just be something that just comes up and it may mean something down the road um but it also may need to be something that you want to listen and you yeah. want to connect with yourself and discover you discover more about yourself um yeah. and also like just uh to unload and to um you know if there's things that come up and you think like okay i i need to process this a little bit more or integrate it or get organized with it to think like okay there's this for me and and what do i want to do about it that you can kind of work that through through a journaling process and there's that's a whole other conversation because there's so many ways I to journal could, i could do a whole other episode <laughs> with you on journaling journaling is like my number one mm thing that I just I have to get it yeah get, get it in every day yeah but for sure everything you're saying I just absolutely agree with so much because a lot of times I have so many people that's like my most common question is like how do I start journaling what what's your prompts like whatever there's no wrong journal I tell yeah. them that like get whatever one you want at Target you know like, yeah. it doesn't yeah. matter but for me I there's no guided prompt every day it's right. just whatever yeah yeah the pen and my brain want to do yeah. and say and i i tell everyone i'm like i just start writing what i feel like in that current moment and then it ends up just going yeah um and, or what you were saying kind of like after a meditation or during like brain dump yeah just it might look stupid it might look yeah. like chicken scratch like just but it's out of your head after yeah. you wrote it and it's so important and so impactful like, it is it is yes so absolutely I, I disagree with that i have just like stacks of journals and i think it's so funny you never you never have to go back and look at it if you want Some, right sometimes right. i tell people like it actually is kind of fun i i look back at a journal 
you know, my very first one, I think was like two or three years ago. And it's so funny to kind of read because I'm just like, I don't even know what I was saying. And I thought, like, you know, yeah, like, it's yeah. just like you, you, you learn so much about yourself. You do. The way. Yes. It's this great realization with yourself. And I love it. So. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I could talk about journaling with you forever, too. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's yeah. There's well, so many different ways. Yeah. And and yeah, I think it's the best way to form a relationship with yourself mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you get to know yourself. You feel better about a lot of your thoughts. Yeah. A lot of times. Um, I like it because if I'm feeling maybe uneasy or not good about something, when I write it out, I like process the thought yeah, yeah. and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, it's actually not that bad. Or right. Like, actually, right. This makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know? And you can get that clarity and you yes. can, um, get where you can, you can let things go, you know? Mm -hmm. And so there's so many benefits to it and different mm -hmm. styles in different ways. And mm -hmm. yeah. And that's another thing, another one that you kind of just trust the process mm -hmm. if it feels like a task there are some some mornings i don't have it yeah in my routine this morning i knew i was hitting traffic so you yeah know, I, I know i'll get to it later. yeah yeah um but that's another thing it's just one of those priorities maybe instead of getting on a tiktok or yeah. getting on instagram take that 10 minutes to journal i have like i know a lot of girls do like the red light mask yeah. right now i'm like that's 10 minutes yeah that i journal like you yeah know, yeah just finding that time prioritizing it habit stacking exactly Super exactly beneficial. yeah and making it a, a a ritual a ritual that you look forward to and is your time with yourself and yeah and it is about kind of making it feel like or finding where it feels like something that you really crave and can't yes. wait to get to versus another thing to do so mm -hmm. yeah it, it it definitely um when done right is something <laughs> that you just feel like i can't live without it i yeah. yeah i'm a big keep my phone on do not disturb yeah and indulge in a bunch of self-care things I rather do that than be on TikTok anyways. Yeah. So, but I think it takes a little bit of practice to get to that point. Right. <laughs> right. Yep. So, what's your take on people who just aren't open to trying meditation or breath work at all? Yeah, I think, you know, it's a lot of people their idea of meditation is like it's this woo-woo um, you know, like a, it speaks to a you know, like a, a hippie crowd or, yeah. you know, like it's just, it's a type of person that does it or that believes in it. And that's where I really want to campaign behind it and bring the psychology and some of the science behind it and really challenge that, that belief and understand that there's real true benefit to this. And the more we're learning about wellness, um, the body, the mind, all of it, it, it is an integral part of, of, all of our, our harmony and our well-being. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that the idea that some people have is again, like you're in a, in a forest alone doing it, or you need to go to a specialized kind of meditation uh, training in India and, you know, do a really extreme kind of um, you know, uh, 30 day silent kind of minute. And so, and that, that absolutely can be some yeah. people's journey and some people's path, but, um, it doesn't have to be. And, mm -hmm. um, so I think that helping people understand and it can speak to different populations. I mean, we have different universities testing on meditation and heart conditions. So you might have somebody that is never would believe in meditation, but is now talking to their cardiologist about what you can do to change the trajectory or, you know, to right. work on what they might be dealing with of the heart issue. And if meditation comes up, rather than just sweep it under the rug and go, oh, that's not for me, yeah why not give it a try and right. so for some people if it speaks to you because it's speaking to you on a physical condition that brings you into it um that that's worth giving a try right when you're at that place where your health is um a, a big concern it's worth giving a try and for people that just are into kind of a wellness lifestyle or how to kind of prioritize their their mental health and their self-care and all of that. I think 
Um, that's maybe there's people more in that kind of world that are more open yeah. to it. Um, but I also think that there's some um, maybe some judgment too on what meditation needs to look like or what it is. And so I think, um, you know, just really being open to finding what works for you mm -hmm. and finding, I mean, I do, I, I'm currently getting additional kind of certification in a mindfulness and meditation, um, you know, and I've done TM. I love everything that we do here and I do it excessively. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so, and I have apps at home. When I'm at home, I have all my favorite apps and I yeah. rotate through them. So I think it's finding what, what works and being open mm -hmm. to it and that it's not a one, like it's not just a one, the idea of meditation or what people may have in their mind and why they've turned it off. Right. I want to kind of challenge that and to broaden mm -hmm. what meditation is and, um, and what the practice is ultimately about. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people that would maybe be in a situation where they don't believe in it at all or don't want to try it at all, you know, if it's coming down to like, their last resort, they're going to look back and be like, why didn't I not just try this yeah. in the beginning? This yeah. Is easy and free. free. And you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. You know? And I think that a lot of people are kind of in that situation. You know, I think that a lot of people in those situations that could also use their story as a teaching lesson. Like, hey, sure. don't be like me and yeah. wait till it's your last resort. Right. Right. But that comes with a lot of being open minded and yeah. open to hearing the education. Hopefully, a lot of people that are in your practice are open to pushing that more yeah. at the beginning. Yeah. And I think that that's, you know, another issue or conversation. But um, I think that it, even, you know, patients or clients coming to their doctors and saying like, hey, like, what what do you think about X, Y, and Z first yeah. before we get there? You know? Right, right. I know that's, that would be the dream when <laughs> right. it, it's like anywhere you kind of turn and you're seeking some professional help, especially around your your overall health in mm -hmm. any capacity that if that doesn't enter into the conversation, it's a shame. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, something too is that I think a lot of people are looking at things like this as a form of like actual therapy yeah um rather you know i'm someone i just had on my podcast recently kind of gave me that point of view where it's like you know like talk therapy is amazing it mm -hmm. is i love it i i do it yeah. but um she was kind of explaining you know this can also be yeah. your therapy yeah like, you know pay for this as your therapy yeah and i i thought about and I was like that is so true so yeah some weeks this would be more beneficial for me yeah um and it still physically and mentally is is helping me engage into those thoughts on a deeper level right right mm -hmm. and that's kind of um you know recognizing that so much of what we need is within and so um, yeah. we're constantly kind of looking to others and, and in different places to get sort of that stillness or that peace that we're, we're after. And it's, it's within, we all have it within us. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah. it's, you know, it, it's finding that route um, to get there. And I think too, like even with their prices here, that was a big thing that I wanted to have prices that were consistent with a copay, mm -hmm. um, and having member where you think about having a membership for what would be the price of one therapy session, yeah. um, to come as often as you can come is just another way of kind of recognizing that or, or speaking to people that this is accessible mm -hmm. and to think about it in that, that way of, mm -hmm taking care of your yourself and it's like so good yep. everyone should be coming here <laughs> i mean that's true it's a lot of, but a lot of people don't, aren't the way you talk about it you're not selling it as a almost you almost aren't even selling it as a service you're selling it as like you know like we want this for you i yeah. want you to feel what i feel yeah. what i've experienced what i've got from it and i think that that's really special thank you yes i'm a, a massive believer in it so. yeah yeah. And yeah you practice what you preach um so what's your biggest piece of advice for someone that's kind of starting this meditation journey for the first time? I think it's um, start where you are. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that, and I can even speak for myself, where um, learning the connection with breath, I just didn't get for a long time. Yeah. Um, I understood like how I'd feel when I would take a couple deep breaths and like, okay, oh, that feels good. And I would have to remind myself like, oh, that feels great when I do it. And, but I just rarely did it. And I thought the more I 
you know, I try to kind of get control over my breath or really work my breath into helping my mental state, I, I got a little stressed about it. Um, yeah. And I thought like, I'm almost feeling like I'm trying to manipulate or, or control it too much that it's actually increasing my anxiety or it's making me feel like I'm short on breath or I'm not doing it quite right. So I think what I had to learn was to just start with just listening to my breath and just kind of making that connection with my breath by just listening. Yeah. And so sometimes even when I'm going to sleep at night, I'll just listen to my breath and before you know it, I'm like, oh my God, I had the best sleep ever yeah. you know, when I fall asleep. <laughs> um, and so I think wherever you are, and, and then very quickly after that, my relationship with my breath, it was like, I, I get it. Mm -hmm. And then I understand how the breathing can impact your mental state. So, or yeah. your brainwave states. Um, and so I think wherever you are, if you feel like, oh, I, I tried to take a breath work class and, um, and I felt like I, wow, that was intense or that was a lot, but how do I take that with me all the time where I have the benefits that I feel or the release that I feel? How do I manage my own breath so right. that I can do that outside of a breath work class? Um, and so I think it is you making that connection in the same way that sometimes in fitness they'll say they'll talk about make the the mind body the mind muscle connection right it's something yeah. about like if you can if you're focused on this particular muscle group when you do the movement mm -hmm. um you have better results yeah. and so in that same way when you can connect with your breath i think that can um that just starting there can be a Huge, beautiful yeah. starting place because mm -hmm. then you have your breath with you always. Mm -hmm. And once you have control over your, or know how to um, work your breath to help whatever kind of experience you're having, what a gift yeah. and something that you will, you have with you all the time. Um, so I think that's a big thing. And I think um, the a big part of just kind of mindfulness and meditation is to try to do it without judgment. Mm -hmm. So another thing that I've um, heard from people is that they'll when they're starting meditation, they're like, well, I don't know if I'm doing it right. Or <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's going to work for me. Definitely or yeah, <laughs> yeah. So there's like that uncertainty, right? That yeah. like, is this going to work? Or am I doing it right? Or I really try to empty my mind and then I'm more stress because I'm recognizing I get upset or frustrated, like, yeah. oh, I'm having all these thoughts. So it really is, um, it's a much more gentle approach to have with yourself than than thinking that there's a rigid way to do it. Yeah, I was gonna say, is there even really a, a wrong way? No, there really isn't. <laughs> yeah. But if but if you're working too hard at it, then, then um, that would be something where to just kind of think about starting where you are. So when you yeah. get to your working too hard on your breath, just go back to listening to it and then yeah. seeing where you are. When you're working too hard about trying to um, get rid of your thoughts, then just to stop and watch them, you know? Right. It, so it's it's much more effortless and than what people think. And mm -hmm. so I think what they what a lot of people think, if it's that effortless, they they must not be doing it right yeah and so that's where i would say no just get into the practice of get to know yourself get, get to, to know, know your yourself it, exactly yes. exactly yeah and anything matters if you've got um two minutes that's great that yeah. is great and so that start is small. yeah start small exactly exactly mm -hmm. and like anything um you know it it's, can be something that you can get into a great practice and then you fall off and then starting back up feels like the hardest thing so just start mm -hmm. just start and whether that's a uh, just five minutes or two minutes or whatever it is just start somewhere yeah. and then you kind of get the ball rolling the hardest part is starting the resistance is normal too. the resistance would be like oh i don't want to do it or i i would much rather be on my phone or on TikTok. and i <laughs> versus that sounds so much yeah. more exciting than meditating yeah. know that that's kind of the process too if there is that resistance because it does um, we're, we're as humans just wanting to go towards the, you know, the most gratifying or the most exciting or whatever exactly. it is. And so that's part of the work. And when you know, you're, um, you're 
you know, you're kind of overcoming. And yeah. when you make those choices for yourself of going, no, this is better for me to do it. And I'm going to do it. Just know that that's a huge triumph and yeah. celebrate your triumphs and yeah. stick with it. And I think celebrating is so important. It like, is. Yeah. Like just celebrate even doing it two times in your first week ever yep. and then eventually it'll gradually increase exactly as you improve with it um and I, again the starting small it's just like what you're saying about the no phone in the morning yeah same thing with the meditation just yeah. a little bit goes along it does a very it does long way. and i think one of the side effects of meditation <laughs> is that you tend to feel more creative more inspired yeah. um and so if you're starting your day with that or you're adding that in as a as a habit um you may find that you're feeling more inspired more motivated all of a sudden you're like oh it gets a little bit easier to get to the gym oh it's a little bit easier to make these healthy food choices or to cook myself dinner or to go on a long walk there's just so much that comes with that that um you may just find that like oh it's just getting easier and easier exactly. to do all of those things prioritizing that self-care for mm -hmm. yourself ends up improving your mental health and then you end up improving every other part of your body yeah and your whole entire life style and function and everything you do yeah the way you present yourself your energy that's how i feel yeah. at least yeah um, and absolutely. that's that's what i want and i'm sure you do too i want everyone to feel like that yeah. and everyone to learn that um and to recognize that just every day won't be perfect right. every meditation won't be perfect but it does just get easier that's a great it way does. to put it yeah it does get easier yeah you understand more why maybe i'm off i i understand maybe if a routine isn't as doesn't feel as easy i'm like okay i recognize i just need to slow down then today yeah yeah exactly mm -hmm. you learn so much about yourself mm -hmm. and you just start to transform into your optimal and your most authentic and you just find you're so much more in harmony yeah and everything kind of falls into place a little bit more when when we are living that way so this was such a beautiful conversation it was I, it really was so many good things i think the listeners are really going to engage in this and benefit from this and hopefully be inspired by a lot of it yeah yeah so um so where can our listeners find you and follow you on social media okay we on <laughs> social media we are um tbr so it's the acronym for the breathing room mm -hmm. tbr meditation um and that's instagram and facebook and um TikTok, very new on TikTok. Perfect. Yes. And then we are located in Westwood. Um, our physical space is in Westwood, close to UCLA. Mm -hmm. um, and we are open seven days a week. Um, in the evening, we have um, community. So we have different classes, breath work, sound baths. Um, Sunday morning, we have sound bath as well, group guided meditation. And then the rest of the time and during the day, it is you come in when it's convenient for you, when you want to come in, okay. you're building your habits or you're building your rituals and routine. Um, and just know that we're here. And it's amazing. I've tried. <laughs> So yeah, so thank you so much. Thank Miranda. you. This was such a great thank conversation. You. Is there anything else that you want to add to the listeners or? I don't think so. I just think um, come on in and if you have any questions or any doubts or need more information, we are here to answer any of those questions and walk you through it, help you mm -hmm. kind of design what it is. So we're here for you. Thank you so much for thank coming you. on today. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.